Okay, this problem says to find the monthly payments, capital R, necessary to pay off a loan of $90,000 at 5% compounded monthly for 30 years, and also that we should round our final answer up and go to the nearest cent, but go up, and that's important. Because this is a compound interest loan payment problem, we know the formula we should use is capital P times the quantity 1 plus I to the N is equal to capital R times the quantity with 1 plus I quantity to the N minus 1 all over the Y. That's the formula for calculating monthly payments in a compound interest loan. We also know that little i is r over m, little r over m, and little n is little m times t. Now, it'd be helpful to identify everything. We're looking for capital R, but we know that the present value is 90,000 because the present value is always the amount of the loan. Little r is the annual interest rate, so that's the 5%, and t is 30 for 30 years, and we're compounding monthly, so M is 12. Thus, to calculate little i, we take 5% as a decimal, which is 0 .05, and divide by 12. Now, a word of warning here. The only calculator you can use on the test is this one, and you need to be proficient with it, so practice with this calculator. 0 .05 divided by 12 equals. This is the calculator's attempt at scientific notation. It simply means take the value displayed, but, but because that's a negative exponent, you move the decimal place two places to the left. So what you end up with would be 0 .0041, and then 6 keeps repeating. Now this is where you can really get into trouble if you're not careful. Anytime the numbers are really large, this is a pretty large number, you need uh, quite a few decimal places, probably a lot more than you think, in your intermediate steps. In fact, I would say when these numbers are this large, I would make sure I let that number stay in the calculator and use the unrounded value. Who knows, maybe even that number of decimal places is not sufficient. It depends on the size of the present value. So I'm going to try my best to keep that number in the calculator. In fact, if I hit uh, MN, that actually takes the uh, number in the display and puts it in the memory, and it's the shift key of MR which retrieves that number from the memory. So I'm going to do shift MN, and that puts that number in the display in the memory so I can tr retrieve it back later. Whenever the present value is large, I would suggest doing that because you might be off by more than a cent if you don't. So in any case, I'm going to store that number. Now m times t is very easy. It's 12 times 30, which of course is 360. Easy enough. Now it's a matter of plugging things in. So the present value is 90,000, so you get 90,000 times the quantity 1 plus, and it's this value, but keep in mind I have it in the calculator, so I'm not depending on how I've rounded it. 0.0041666667 to the 360th power is equal to, we're solving for capital R, so I keep it in the equation, and then this 1 plus i is the same as 1 plus i over there, so I can go ahead and just do the addition and write it as 1.0041666667 raised to the 360th power. Then subtract 1 and divide the whole thing by little i. I can't emphasize enough that I have that interest rate stored in memory so that I can use it without even relying on the amount of rounding I've even done there. So the next thing I want to do is uh, take this 1.04 etc and raise it to 360th power. 
I've got the .004 already in there, so I just need to add one to it. Remember, I still have the interest rate in the calculator, so all I have to do is add one to it. So if I do plus one equals, I have this number that I need to raise to the 360th power. The power button is the X, the Y, and then I type in 360 and hit the equal sign. So I have 90,000 times 4.46774403. And that's equal to R times this quantity here. And this quantity here, I've already calculated that to be 4.46774403. So if I tra subtract 1 from it, it becomes 3.4. Six seven seven four four three zero three, and then I can just divide it by that number. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. I'm taking the number in the display. I will subtract one, minus one, and hit equal. Then I want to divide it by. Now this is the value I wrote down, but remember I stored that in memory, so I can hit divide it by, and then I can do MR, which retrieves that number from memory. And now it comes back out in its unrounded form, and I feel better about that. And then if I hit equal, um, that's what I get. Uh, wait a minute. I forgot to add one back to it. Excuse me. So let's do this again. I have 3.46774403. Three zero three divided by. Okay, let's come back over here. This number, which is stored in memory, so I do memory recall MR and hit equal. There we go, and I get eight hundred and thirty-two. So I get eight thirty-two point two five eight six three two seven. And I'm practically home free now. All I need to do is divide, or multiply and divide. So if I multiply those two together, I get, let me store that in memory. Let me do memory in for this number. And I'll multiply these two together. And I get, if I clear, I get 90,000 times 4.46774403 equals, and that comes out to be 402096.987, excuse me, 7, 3. And that's equal to this 832.2586327 times R. So to solve for R, I just have to do the division. So I get capital R is equal to 402096.9873 divided by 832.2586327. And when I do that division, divided by, eight three two point two five eight six three two seven. I actually think I had that number stored in memory, but in any case, I've got it back now. Hit equal, and I get a value of R. of 483.1394611. And remember, the problem said to round it up to the nearest cent. So if I'm going to round it up, I'll get a value of R, which is a monthly payment of 483.14.
Now, in this problem, it's a little deceptive because it said to round up, and that would have rounded up anyway. But keep in mind, had that 9 been even a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 1 or a 0, you still would have rounded up because it didn't say round normally. It said to round up, so we round up regardless.